Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel, Smith Shack's Custom Baits, Brick Smith Shack here. Um, today I'm going to be making a color called American Shad. Um, I apologize for last week's video, it wasn't the best, it was, it was a long hot day out here in the garage, um, and at the end I didn't realize that my microphones had died, both of them had, their, their batteries in them only last a couple hours, and, and, uh, and I didn't realize I was pushing it that close. So, uh, and also I think I'm, I think I, must have deleted a clip that should have been in there. I was like, why is this not adding up? Whatever, I was too tired to, too tired to fix it and figure it out at that time. <laughs> um, but today, I'm rested. We're starting over. I'm only going to do one video today. Um, but I said in uh, two weeks ago, I said I would put the, uh, the link to, to American Shad in the, in the description. Well, I don't have the video anymore. Um, I deleted all of the house colors for whatever reason i don't remember why at this point um so i'm just going to redo them and today i'm going to make that video american shadow go ahead and once the video is uploaded and scheduled for release i'll go ahead and put the link in the uh in the description of, of that of the video from two weeks ago um why am i not at the refuge today it's tuesday well because tomorrow night, I totally forgot about this until I got an email. I was going to leave yesterday morning. Um, I got an email reminding me about a self-defense class I'd signed up to go to in Omaha. That happens at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, tomorrow evening, I guess. Um, so I have to go to that. Well, I don't have to, but it's something I want to go to, so I just delayed my trip by a few days. Um, I picked up a tent. To go to, to for camping, um, I could have got a dome tent. For a, I can talk a dome tent for uh, for a hundred bucks, but instead I got a yurt for one hundred twenty. Right, so the yurt looks a whole lot looks a whole lot more roomy than that six person dome tent did, um, and it's only twenty bucks more. I think it'll be worth every penny. Um, it seems like it's going to be pretty easy to set up. Um, there's only like four steps. Uh, it'll, it'll take a little bit, but um, you just stretch it out on the ground. You stake out the the, the floor first, and then uh, you you put in the center pole, and then the pole for the doorway, um, and then you use guy ropes to to finish it off. Which it might be a little time consuming to get it right, but um, especially the first time. But uh, I have confidence I can handle it, and uh, so I, I bought some basic camping gear. I have food already, ready to go, and uh, my fishing baits are ready to go. My, my fishing stuff is ready to go. Um, I have covers for both kayaks right now, um, which is nice. Um, so uh, without any further ado, well, by the time you guys see this, you should see this tomorrow. Uh, you should be able to see us on Wednesday, um, and then the next morning I'll be leaving for the refuge. So hopefully the next week, Next week's video will have um, pictures and some news on how that, on how that all went. Um, one other thing real quick, there's nine lakes at the refuge that are open to fishing. And I found out that this last winter, six of them had low oxygen levels. Um, they've had drought conditions in the, in the sand hills for the last three-ish years or so, um, which has lowered water levels. And then with the ice and then the snow over the ice, um, water levels and or water levels, oxygen levels in six of the nine lakes were very low. Um, it's not last the last information, the latest information I say, should say that I saw. Um, they they still didn't know that how bad the winter kill if the, if it happened, um, how bad it was, um, or how long those oxygen levels were that low. But at least three of the lakes had plenty of oxygen. So um, when I get there to the refuge, I'll stop and ask them if those other six lakes are still fishable. If not, well, I still have three other lakes I can fish. So no B. Um, so with that said, let me get the, let me get the plastic all, uh, cooked, and I'll show you how to make this. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, first things first, we're going to do the top. And the top was going to get nine drops of this black okay let's 
set that aside. All right, here we go. There's a few air bubbles in it, but that's okay. Up there on top. You, every time you stir it like this, you stir in more air bubbles. Keeping them all out is kind of an exercise in futility. Um, and some guys like to get as much. Oh, shoot. Well, that didn't work out too well, did it? All right. All right. So now that fiasco is cleaned up, I just waited for the, for the uh, plastic all that spilled to cool enough to where I could peel it off the, the, the bench and then remelt it. So, with that said, I think that's the first time that I have ever made that mistake on camera. Notice I said on camera. <laughs> All right. So, now that, that the, 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 the black is in, we're going to put in a quarter teaspoon of this 062 gunmetal. stuff here then I'm going to put in a quarter teaspoon of this moss green and then because I'm not making a um, I'm not making a bloodline swim bait. If I was making a bloodline swim bait in this color, I would leave out the chartreuse, which I'm only going to put a small amount of this in. Because um, when you look up the shad, there's a, um, there's, they have a yellow tint across their, uh, all across their lateral line. So we're going to put in just a little bit of this to simulate that. Um, when I do the bloodline swim baits, I make the um, I make the bloodline yellow and leave out this chartreuse glitter. Notice we're not spilling anything this time. <laughs> you know, try not to do that. All right, there we go. See, there's just a little bit of that chartreuse. And the chartreuse is, is one of the color glitters that, that just you just can't seem to keep it from, um, from curling. In fact, all three of these glitters in here are in that category. All right, so let's grab the... Let's grab the other measuring cup here. All right. Now, for the bottom side, um, we're going to put in a quarter teaspoon of this white pearl powder here. Come off my spoon here because the next thing we're going to do is well, actually, I'm not going to use that spoon. I'm going to use this tiny little spoon that is, you probably can't see it, it says it's smidge on it. We're going to put in about like that. It's a violet highlight powder. And that's all that's going to go in the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and stir this stuff up. This takes a little bit more effort than just stirring in. And you can kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see it in the, through the camera, but I still definitely see it um, when I look over the camera. Look over, the, yeah. I don't see it here. But there's, um, but I could definitely see the purple highlight, the violet. There we go. Get that down in there. I'll have to bring both of these back up to temperature. Um, I'm going to shoot the 
the two and a half inch jerk bait. Um, I'm going to shoot the five inch uh, jerk bait, the fluke. Um, and then just for giggles, I'm going to shoot the the Helgramite mold. Yeah, I know. I should probably shoot that in a probably shoot that in a um, in a more natural color, like browns, greens, maybe some black or something. But I think it'll look pretty cool. And that's what I'm doing today, just for that, just the cool factor. All right, let me go ahead and heat these back up, bring them back up to temperature, and we'll get set up to uh, shoot these. Okay, let's go ahead and shoot these molds. All right. First two will be the little jerk baits. No one's full. This one is full. Now for the five inch jerk bait, the fluke. Okay, that one's full. And now for the Helgramite. Let's see if these things will catch fish in a in a bait fish pattern. All right, that should be good. Top off that sprue a little bit. Okay. That one was kind of tough this time. All right, we'll be right back and open up the molds. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and open up the these little jerk baits. Funny how no matter which side you pick them up, they, they stick to the other side. You know, these... These have all laminated very nicely. Okay. Let's see if this one. Oh no, no, this one didn't. This one, this one, uh, they all stayed on the on the one side, opposite side where I opened them. Okay. They all they all filled out real nicely. They all laminated really well. Yeah, those are pretty nice. Okay, now let's uh, now let's go ahead and do. That. Let's open this one up next. Now these, this one here, it always sticks to the bottom because because of these the built-in hook slots. Okay, now this side should all be pretty nice. When we flip them over, you notice we've got some glitter down in here, down here on this side, um, quite a bit on this one, and a lot on this one. Um, but that's pretty that's pretty standard for that mold um, to do that one side to go really good um, and the other side to not. Um, there, I've tried. I don't know. I've experimented for hours. Trying to get them to to all look the same on the other side, and and they just don't. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at these helgramites, three-inch helgramites. There we go. Just the design of this mold, the way it's designed, you, you end up with a lot more waste. Oops, give me that. All right, take a look at these guys. But, even though there's a lot of waste, 
every time I've poured a lamb or shot a laminate through this mold, they've come out looking this good. Okay. Now I don't know if this color will catch fish in this bait, but I just might have to try that somewhere because that looks that looks pretty darn good. Got a little bit of a dent there in that one, but that's that's nothing. That's nothing bad. Too terrible. Still usable. That one too. Um, well, there you go. Bob's your uncle, huh? All right. Well, that's it for today. I hope you liked what you saw. Um, this will go into the house colors uh, uh, playlist, um, and uh, hopefully, I'm going to take all these baits with me to the refuge. Um, hopefully they all catch fish. Well, I know the um, I know that the two and a half inch jerk bait catches crappie because I've caught them on it, uh, and, and in this color, in fact. Um, but we'll see about that uh, helgramite. We'll see what happens. It looks really good. Um, would you eat it if you were a fish? I probably would. <clears throat> uh, but uh, um, hopefully, I catch a lot of fish at the refuge and have a have a good fishing report when I get back. Um, so uh, if you like what you saw, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, maybe take a look at some other videos if you're, if you're a newer subscriber. Take a look at some of the videos I made in the past and, and laugh at how bad they are compared to today. Um, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, and, uh, and share. Share the videos with... Uh, with, with, with the people you know, whether your friends or your enemies or your frenemies. Because um, my mom's taught us to share, right? And sharing is one of the ways you can help the channel. That, hitting the like button, watching videos. Um, we're slowly growing, slowly but steadily growing, it, it, the channel is. So uh, we'll be hitting that 1,000 subscriber mark before too long, I think. And uh, until next time, folks, tight lines calm waters, and God bless.